Hey guys, I'm just pulling in out here by Clinton, Minnesota, where Big Stone Egg Service is doing a sediment basin and erosion control job. And what they're having is problems with uh, erosion when the rains come. It's washing the soil down into this ditch and carrying it away with the water. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna build some large uh, sediment control basins, they call them, or basically like a large dike, and they're gonna put some tile in there to take that water in through the tile instead of washing over the top of the soil and running that nice, uh, healthy, fertile soil into our waterways. It's extremely good for the environment. I mean, that is the biggest reason they're doing this is to keep their topsoil in the field. So we're gonna go uh, ride on the tile plow with Randy. We're gonna check out some of the other stuff they're doing. They're running the trencher right now. And uh, I think it's gonna be kind of fun. When I first pulled up, they were using this trencher to plow in the 15-inch main tile at the bottom of the hill. This is the tile that will end up taking all of the water from the five basins that they're going to build. You'll be running lines into this, I have to assume, right? Um, we just have two with the, with the water and sediment basin project. One comes down here. Oh, the I see. Up there, and then one comes down where they didn't work there. Okay. And then one comes down from just west of that. So it's a basin you know, that'll run into this. That's why this tile is so large. Yeah. And there'll okay. be three up here, three on the main ground. Three yeah, basins. Okay. The water and sediment basin. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So now they're switching what they call the boot, which is a piece that feeds the tile into the trench that they're cutting with the plow. Here you can see the obvious erosion problem where this water runs down the hill from way back in that area there, snakes through the field, and it washed all this out. You know, this is over time, this isn't a one year thing. They're gonna build sediment basins up there, which is a dike. They're gonna mound it up, and they're gonna have a tile inlet that will be raised up, called the Hicken Bottom where it will take only the water in and not any sediment that flows down through there. So hopefully they can stop this erosion, close this ditch up, and they'll be able to farm over the top of this, and you won't know that this was here, and uh, they'll stop, completely stop the erosion. you're not going right down the middle of that ditch? If we're running right down the middle of this ditch, uh, we're tearing that dirt up so it's loose dirt on top of it. And if you get a big rain, it'll come through and it'll cut it out that much worse. It'll cut it out right to the bottom of our pipe. And then uh, we'll get the replacing pipe plus, you know, we're out here for erosion control and 
and that would be bringing all that dirt down, basically washing into a ditch. Be completely counteractive to what you're trying to prevent. Yes. Yeah. Explain to me and to the guys watching where the funding comes from for this project and where how that works. The funding for the project is partially, I know each year is a little different. I don't quote me, but I believe this year was about 50% uh, cost sharing of the project. Which means that 50% of the expense of this project. Yes, 50% to the farmer, 50%. Uh, it's partially between uh, the NRCS and the SWCD, which is the Soil Water Conservation District. And the NRCS being the Natural Resource Conservation. Yes. Yep. yep. So they help they help fund these projects. Um, With the environment in mind. Correct. That's the yep. sole purpose. 100%. They, they want to step in yep. and, and make sure that everything's being done correctly. Yep, and then which is why there's a guy on site. He uh, did the survey, set it up. And then he's following behind and he keeps shooting on the pipe, you know, making sure that we're installing it uh, exactly how it was designed and how it was supposed to be done or they don't get the funding. So then explain how they decide what size the pipe's going to be in the inlets and how they can control that. So the rain events are basically set up, it was a 10 year rain event for this area. Uh, which was like 3.8 inches of rain, I believe. Which in a means, day. means what? Which means it, uh, uh, 3.8 inch rain within one day, within 24 hours time. Is what they expect to be? Is, is what these dams and uh, intakes are designed to handle. And then they will let that water. So if it rained 3.8 inches, uh, when we get the dams and the intakes put in, it'll actually hold that water back for anywhere from 36 hours to 48 hours. And that way there it allows so that all of the basins, there's five basins going here, dams with intakes. All of those will draw down at the same time and it, it allows the water that does come into the basin so the dirt and sediment settles out of it before it leaves. Fast moving water is what causes erosion. all designed uh, different sizes to different grades so the flatter the pipe lays the bigger the pipe we need uh, the more grade the smaller the pipe can be and it's all 100% controlled by GPS so our sub sub edge accuracy yeah so our base is, our GPS is here on the machine and the base is sitting a uh, quarter mile away between the two of them they can triangulate to get that sub inch accuracy Here's probably the worst of the erosion area. You can see the obvious problem here. This is what they're gonna fix. So they pulled in from the driveway and they've snaked it closer to the ditch here so that once they can control that water, it'll just run down there inside the tile and be carried away by itself without taking the soil with it. Randy was just telling me the cost of this project here. You can see where we've come from the driveway. It's not a, it's not a crazy project. No. And the cost of this project is what'd you say? About forty-four thousand. Forty-four thousand uh, dollars. Right. And that's that's including the dirt work. I mean, we have a lot of dirt to move out here yet uh, to finish. You know, making the basins. But again, like we were talking, the farmer's not going to gain. They're not gaining 20 acres of farm ground here. They're not draining a swamp to pick up a bunch of acres. I don't know. They're not gaining one acre. They're maybe gaining half an acre. Basically, they're gaining what that washout trench was. They'll be able to farm that. They'll be able to farm straight across yeah. that and not lose their topsoil. Right. So yep. to them, it's not. They're not gaining anything other than uh, other than they're not sending their dirt, and minerals, and everything else uh, right. down to the next day. Right. So 
they finished uh, filling in the, the big stuff. We're back down where the problem is really bad here, kind of in the middle of the run. And they're going to be switching to smaller tile and running it up the hill here. This area feeds into this ditch and, and is a part of the issue with the erosion, but it doesn't take near the water, so they're switching to a smaller tile. Did I get that right? Correct, yeah. And then we have to switch, we have to switch boot sizes. For each size pipe, there's a different uh, boot goes with it. So if we were to put this six inch pipe down this big boot, it'll be too wide of a curve at the bottom and there'll be nothing supporting the bottom half of that pipe. And over time, it'll, it'll egg shape and just squash down. The boot being this attachment piece on the plow here, which helps to feed the feed the tile into the right. ground. Yep. He's gonna dig down and find that pipe so that they can tee into it and run a six inch pipe up the hill. So a little bit on what a buffer strip would do in a situation like this. Um, I was talking to Randy a little bit about it and he's got a, a lot more experience with this type of thing than I do. But like Randy was saying, grass waterways will still do the same thing in this type of a situation. The water will still cut through that and just keep eroding out and washing away the same as a river does. In a situation like this, where they're almost strictly just using it to prevent erosion, um, is a little bit different. But a lot of times when you lay tile under the soil in a wet area, to try to get rid of the excess water in the soil, because the soil molecule will only hold a certain amount of water. And you can see there, these little cuts, right there, all along that. This is a perforated tile, they call it. That tile has little cuts in it where the water trickles in after it filters through two, three, four, six, eight feet of soil, it trickles through and filters through that soil and gets down into those cuts. As it goes through the soil, nitrogen in certain forms will cling to the soil so it won't end up in the tile line. But it's the nitrate form that we're worried about. Those nitrates need to be used up by a plant as the nitrogen turns into the nitrate form. Otherwise, those nitrates can leave with the water. So what the drain tile does is allow us to get rid of that excess water so that the nitrates can get used up instead of leaving with that water. Now phosphorus is also a big issue. This is a situation where phosphorus is actually a larger issue because the phosphorus is only going to leave the field if, if uh, it leaves with erosion. So when that topsoil leaves and we lose this uh, healthy black soil, that's where the phosphorus ends up in the water. So this drain tile is clearly going to prevent that for these farmers here. So for this second six inch run they've actually got to cut through the old driveway here. We're setting the tee up right now to run into that with the smaller six inch tile. They're going to run it out of there up against the old driveway here and up this way where they'll cross the driveway and go up through the swale. Well, the weather's starting now. Now we got freezing rain coming down with the wind. It doesn't feel really good. So I had to switch to the GoPro rather than running my new camera, but you can see they got that run going up the hill. And they're gonna close the driveway back up again soon here. Show me that restrictor again. So that goes inside yes. the hicken bottom there. Yes, so that'll go inside this end. 
in that end. So that's yep. how quick the water can go through there. Right. So it's that sits in there like that. Just a restrictor then to slow it down. Five, six, or seven acres that come in here, they'll get restricted down through the standpipe there and run through that tile instead of washing over the top. What's the reason for putting it over here rather than right where the pipe runs? Ah, uh, it has something to do with hydrology. But... Just something to do with the flow of the water inside the pipes? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna walk down the hill here and see what Randy's got going on. He's down in the worst of the worst, down at the bottom of the hill. That's where the the erosion was the worst there, where the this hill and this hill come together. And they meet down there, the water meets down there, and it flushes a lot of that soil out, continues on down. So there's gonna be a large basin down at the bottom here, and they're gonna catch that, and he's digging out for the standpipe now. Plowing in more of these standpipes as you go up the hill on the same run here. You got three on this same run? Correct, yep. And then you'll reduce each of those down? Each each one is reduced uh, compared to the acres coming in. So it's uh, whatever acres are coming in, it's calculated out for the right size to be in each one. So for those who might not know, why do you have to do more than one? Uh, do the top one and then as you come down you have to keep catching the side slopes, all the water that comes in below the top one. As you so get down the hill you got to catch that that water that yeah. didn't get caught at the top. If we were to put one down towards the bottom and just one big one, uh, it'd have to be a really big reservoir and you still wouldn't be slowing down the water that's uphill further. So, so you got you to step them down so you slow that water down and catch it each spot. And then even though we're climbing a hill, all three of those basins will empty the same same speed. They'll which all be is, empty the which same Which is how way. the reducers work. Correct. So yep. you'll reduce the top one more than the lower one. Yes, correct. So those guys got this standpipe in. This is the third one. They got two more to do up the hill there to control this in the bad spot. I'm going to take off now. He's going to come fill that one in. I'm going to head up the road and check out one of the fields that they did before to show you guys what the completed project will look like. This is one that they've built already, but this is a this is a short one, so it's not very tall, but it goes a long ways across here. And what that does is catch the water that was was uh, coming from the road here, and coming from across the road, and from from these acres up here, and these acres over here. And instead of running down this way and eroding all of that all the way back through the field there, this catches the water and dumps it into that that uh, standpipe right there. So then that standpipe has in it to slow it down so that it catches enough water to hold it there until that standpipe can take it away from the ground and run it farther back into the field. All right, I'm in and out of the wind. That freezing rain really stings the eyeballs after a while, um, and that wind is pretty miserable. But thanks to Randy and the crew at uh, Big Stone Egg Service for letting me hang out for the day and see what it is they do. You know, this drain tile is kind of a controversial thing it seems like but uh, when you get down to the science of it what we're doing out here is important environmental conservation nobody gets the short end of the stick quicker than a farmer if we lose our topsoil this is the real way that drain tiles being used to benefit the environment in a real way 
This is a situation where the farmer is not gaining a ton of acres, but they want to clean their field up and they want to hang on to their topsoil because they're losing their best, richest ground. When they let that dirt go out with the water, that is their most fertile soil. They want to hang on to that, they want to hang on to the nutrients, and they want the right amount of water in their field. So that's the reason that so many farmers have been installing a lot of drain tile. Once again, thanks for watching, guys.